Just by a show of hands, how many of you in this room have heard the following phrases? All religions are basically the same. Or this one, your God and my God are the same, they just have a different name. Or maybe even this one, God can be anything you want him to be. Even back when I was a student, we were dealing with these questions. People have a lot of different visions and opinions about who God is. But the Christian God, our God, is not some unknown distant figure whose identity is hard to see. We don't need to play guess who to try and figure out who God is. If you remember prior to the Bay Rally, we were talking about what we believe about God's Word, the Bible, and how we can trust it as a reliable and supreme authority for our lives. One of our core values about the Bible is it reveals who God is and what he's like. So it would make a lot of sense that what the Bible says about God defines the characteristics of who he is and what we should believe about him. In Christianity, we believe in one God, while other religions like Hinduism, Buddhism, believe in a pantheon of gods who govern individual aspects of the world around them. We believe in one supreme God who is in control over all the universe. And we know from scripture, Genesis 1-1, that in the beginning, God, he's been here the whole time. He is eternally existing. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and from whom we live. Our God is the creator of the universe, where he uniquely designed everything in detail, from planets and stars to the atoms that make up everything in six days. And after that, he sat on the throne of his rest, where he still governs in all to, it all today. Everything you see around you and the many things we can't even see or imagine, but we know exist. He is the maker of them all. We believe our God is holy. Isaiah 6, 3, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Psalm 22, 3 says, yet you are holy and throned on the praises of Israel. But what does being holy even mean? Well, the easiest way to describe holy is being set apart. God is so infinitely perfect, powerful, and good that he's not confined to a limited space like we are. He transcends physical limits like space and time, and yet in all of his power, he is active in his creation. Another example of holy is how God desires for us as believers to be holy so we can set ourselves apart from the ways of the world. We do not live like others around us because we are living radically different than what's expected. God is infinitely perfect, just like it sounds. God's perfection is without limits. He does not make mistakes, and everything that comes from him is good. His infinite perfection also means he is all-knowing and all-powerful. Nothing is beyond God's reach to solve. His knowledge is limitless. His presence is everywhere. He is God, and because he is perfect, we can trust in his promises. Now what I think is the coolest part about God, that, that is cru crucial to what we believe about him, is that he graciously purposed from eternity to redeem people for himself and to make all things new for his glory. Here's what, what that means. Before the universe began, God saw everything that was going to occur. More importantly, he loved everything before the beginning of time, from Adam and Eve to you and me. God saw the beauty of the Garden of Eden. He saw what he originally intended for the earth and for us. Then he saw what would happen when Adam and Eve were given the chance to choose an alternative to God. And as we, as humanity, continued to choose temporary fleeting things of this world, God saw that we were not going to get out of our own way. So before time began, before we had time to sin, God planned to send his only son, Jesus Christ, down to die on a cross, rise again three days later, and through his son's resurrection, redeem us and make us right before God. Heal us of all the afflictions. Whatever you want to call it, he is restoring us and making us new. Check out what the last book in the Bible, Revelation, says. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. 
And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. God's plan from the very beginning was to restore us and this beautiful creation of his back to perfection, to its former glory and beauty for his glory alone. I don't know about you, but that's a God I want to and can believe in, that I can be confident in, that I can give my life to, because he was willing to give up his only son for me. Next week, we're going to talk about the one and only son, Jesus Christ. We can't wait to see you there.